what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so this is going to be my spoiler free review for the conjuring the devil made me do it aka the conjuring 3 just got out of a press screening to see this film now just to get it out of the way for those of you that are wondering whether i liked it or not i will start off by saying i did like this film but i am going to be one of the ones joining in on saying this is the weakest entry in this conjuring trilogy now it's continuing of course the trend that we see with these third entries for a lot of these trilogies that they have their entries where they get to the third one is kind of like the, considered the weakest outing the conjuring three the devil made me do it it's a so it's a solid movie overall in terms of the fact that it's compelling in many ways but at times it's just uneven overall compared to the other two films patrick wilson and vera farmiga they make up for a lot of the unevenness that you get in this one the central narrative that we are revolving around at this at this stage what the devil made me do it it's a chilling story of terror murder and unknown evil that shocked even experienced real life paranormal investigators ed and lorraine warren one of the most sensational cases from their files it starts with a fight for the soul of a young boy then takes them beyond anything they'd ever seen before to mark the first time in u.s history that a murder suspect would claim demonic possession as defense so of course the film we have patrick wilson vera farmiga and then we have Rory O'Connor, we have Sarah Catherine Hook, Julian Hillard, John Noble, Eugene Bodent, and Shannon Cook. And the screenplay this time around is coming to us from David Leslie Johnson, or David Leslie and Johnson McGoldrick. James Wan steps away from the director's chair. Michael Chaves, who directed The Curse of La Llorona, he's at the helm. I know that was one of the biggest things that you guys were worried about, myself included. A lot of us were worried about this guy taking the helm away from James Wan. That's not a big detriment to this movie at all whatsoever michael shaves he definitely does a more better job directing this than he did with the curse of la llorona this movie does have a lot more tense elements to it than i feel it did than i feel he had with the curse of la llorona however the script is kind of lacking in terms of giving you any other reason to care for the characters outside of the warrens what i appreciate about the conjuring and the conjuring 2 is how the family at the center of it they are made out to feel important made out to feel like they matter made out to feel that we should grow attached or feel some type of way towards them with these characters in this one outside of the warns they feel very underwhelming they don't feel like they are very important especially arnie's character played by oh played by rory o'connor while the character in of itself is what's at the center of what we are dealing with this time around he kind of takes a back seat once things kick it into gear and he's put on trial he's being held at a facility up until his uh court case where they're gonna either find him guilty or innocent most of the film is just ed and lorraine warren going around trying to figure out what is connecting arnie's case to several other similar cases i do like the ideas raised here about whether or not demons are the scariest things out there or those who actually summon them or in this case i guess literally conjure them up uh i do like that aspect of it patrick wilson and vera farmiga their performances and the relationship they have on screen as ed and lorraine warren again that is the heart that drives this drives this film the other characters arnie his girlfriend uh debbie they just don't they don't hit as they don't hit well when you're not focusing on the warrens these other characters they are just very bland with the conjuring and the conjuring 2 there was a built up around the people that this was revolving around i think that's kind of a hindrance to them breaking away from the haunted house formula they're not they're not putting as much focus this time around on what is causing the warrens to get involved in the first place with the first two films with the parent family and then the family in the second film we get to spend time with this family and it builds up to earned scares scares that are very they're jump scares but they feel earned and they're not cheap the conjuring the devil made me do it opts for cheap scares now the opening sequence is by far the one of the best opening sequences in this franchise I would argue that it's the best opening sequence out of the three Conjuring films just in terms of how it really sets the stage and gets the 
gets everything going into gear, gets your emotions going, gets you on the edge of your seat, but then everything else kind of flatlines from there. Again, it's not that the movie itself isn't good. There's a lot of pacing issues. There's a lot of unevenness with the other characters outside of the Warrens. The lack of attention to Arnie and what was going on with Arnie. I feel like that was a big hindrance on this movie turning out to be greater than what it possibly could have been. The movie overall, again, I will just say it's good. It is lacking in terms of just putting that attention on characters outside of the Warrens. I like the Warrens. Again, Vera Farmiga, Patrick Wilson, they knock it out of the park. Once again, that's to be expected. Michael Chase, he directs this film very well. The shots in this film, they are beautiful. The scenery is beautiful. The score in it is, is of course, the only real thing I feel adds, so, add mom, adds moments of tension that feel void at certain points in time in the film because the score in the conjuring films they never disappoint and they don't disappoint here with the devil made me do it but the ending compared to the other ones as well is very anticlimactic very unfulfilling it leaves you feeling as if it was rushed there's almost no time to really digest what you have just watched uh i do like the nods and the homages to a lot of other classic horror films such as the Shining, in many ways, at the end of this movie, The Exorcist at the start of the film that we've seen in the trailer. I know there was a final trailer that came out today. I did not watch this before going to the screening just because I didn't want any other things to be shown to me. The performances from everyone involved across the board, they're all all good. Patrick Wilson, Vera Farmiga, of course, being the two standouts. They knock it out of the park once again as this on-screen paranormal couple of paranormal investigators. I do like the added detail to what is driving them and how they came to know each other. That's also touched on in this film, which I thought was a nice touch. I'm gonna give this movie an honest seven out of ten. It is the weakest out of the out of the trilogy. Uh, I think a lot of you will enjoy it. Others of you, when you watch it, you'll see what I'm talking about as far as like it being uneven compared to the other two. But let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and miss a video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me see any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.